Greetings and welcome to Liberian TV Network. My name is Patricia Jerry Talu, and today I'm going to be sharing with you the history of Liberia around the 12th, 17th, and 18th century. We will be talking about people that was living on the soil before the free color of people came. We'll be talking about Liberia at that time. So relax, enjoy the history of our beloved country, Liberia. The country Liberia contains vast timber reserves and substantial deposits of iron ore, gold, and diamonds. Liberia has been inhabited by indigenous people of Africa at least as far back as the 12th century. Liberia's first inhabitants were ancestors of the Gola and Kisi peoples from the North Central Africa who arrived as early as the 12th century. They were joined by the crew Basso, Kra, and De Egne groups moving in from the north and the east. The Mende speaking people were also some of the indigenous people in Liberia who expanded westward from the Sudan, forcing many smaller settlers or ethnic groups southward the Atlantic Ocean. This influx of those groups was compounded by the decline of the Western Sudanese Malay Empire in 1375 and the Songhe Empire in 1591. The era now called Liberia was a part of the Kingdom of Koya from 1430 to 1898. The Koya Kingdom was a pre-colonial African state in the north of present-day Sierra Leone. The kingdom was founded by the Timni ethnic group around the 1505 by migrants from the north seeking trade with the coastal Portuguese in the south. The kingdom was ruled by an Obad, meaning king, whose real name was not known. The sub-kingdoms within the state were ruled by the nobles titled Bana. The Koya Kingdom kept and maintained diplomatic relations with the British and French in the 18th century. Based on that, children of the Timney nobles were allowed to seek Western educations abroad. However, after fighting a series of wars with the British and Susu, the Koya Kingdom became a British protectorate on August 31st, 1896. At that point, the Koya kings lost almost all powers. The Kingdom of Koya was actually a sub-national kingdom within Liberia, and it was the largest of the traditional kingdoms in present-day Africa, comprising all of the Grand Cape Mount County, which happens to be one of Liberia's oldest county. As inland regions underwent desertification, inhabitants moved to the wetter coast. These new inhabitants brought skills such as cotton spinning, cloth weaving, iron splitting, rice and sorghum cultivation, and social and political institutions from the Malay and the Songhe Empire. Shortly after the main congregate of region, the Vai, of, the Vai people of the former Malay Empire immigrated into the Grand Cape Mount County region. The ethnic crew opposed the influx of VAR, forming an alliance with the maid to stop further influx of VAR. People along the coast built canals and traded with other West Africans from Cape Verde to the Gold Coast. The Gold Coast is a section of the coast of the Gulf of Guinea in Africa. It extends approximately from Exim, Ghana, or nearby Cape Three Points in the west to the Volta River in the east. It was called the Gold Coast because it was an important source of gold in an era of intense colonial rivalry from the 17th century. It was acquired by the British in 19th century. The Gold Coast colony, as Ghana today, became a dom dominant of the British com Commonwealth on March 6, 1957, 
and achieved independence as the Republic of Ghana in 1960. The earliest communities in Liberia traded with the Malay and other kingdoms to the north. Between 1461 and the 17th century, Portuguese, Dutch, and British traders had contacts and trade posts in the region. The Portuguese named the area Costa, Depen- Costa da Pimenta, but as time went by, Liberia came to be known as the Green Coast due to the abundance of Madagueda pepper grains. European traders who battle commodities and goods with local people they encounter. Prior to that, the crew took up trade with European merchants beginning in the 15th century, initially in minerals and spices, and later with slaves from the interior. According to oral tradition, crew escaped slavery themselves by making a bargain with the Europeans. Slaves would be transported across their territory as long as crew themselves were not enslaved. Therefore, crew wore a tattoo, a vertical line drawn down the forehead, the center of their forehead, so they would be identified. Crew received slaves from inland societies and transferred them to the Europeans. By the 18th century, crew sailors, crew sailors were a common sight on European ships engaged in the slave trade. Thank you for watching Liberian TV Network. Please remember to always like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Bye-bye.